the James Webb Telescope has discovered something huge taking place on Neptune. Neptune has always been a bit of a mystery. Even though it was the first planet to be discovered through telescopes, we still don't know that much about it. One of the reasons for this is its great distance from the Sun. Neptune is a fascinating planet. It is named after the Roman god of the sea. Its astronomical symbol is a long three-pronged fork or weapon a stylized version of the god Neptune's trident. Neptune was the first planet to be discovered through mathematics rather than observation. Neptune is 30 times farther from the Sun than Earth is, making it one of the most remote planets in the solar system. Despite its distance, Neptune has still managed to fascinate researchers since its discovery in 1846. In 1989, NASA's Voyager 2 became the first spacecraft to visit the planet. During its flyby, Voyager 2 took some incredible images of Neptune, giving us our first close-up look at the distant world. It's been decades since we've had a close-up look at Neptune's rings, and they're even more stunning and beautiful than we thought. In fact, they are so faint and small that it takes sunlight over four hours to reach them. This is in contrast to Earth, where it only takes sunlight eight minutes to reach us. So this is a special event that we won't be able to see again for another 30 years. The Hubble Space Telescope has taken many awe-inspiring pictures of Neptune over the years, providing evidence of the planet's atmosphere and on rare occasions capturing its mysterious moons. However, Webb's most recent image reveals even more since the powerful telescope can see infrared light, which is invisible to the human eye. In the visible spectrum, Neptune looks like a blue ball set against a black backdrop. But when seen in the infrared, many more fascinating details come into view. So, what can be seen in Webb's latest picture of the ice giant Neptune? Through Webb's images, we can see Neptune is mostly made of gas and is therefore not very solid. It is a very thin atmosphere that is made mostly of methane. Methane is a gas that is very good at reflecting light, which is why Neptune appears very blue. Neptune is tilted on its axis, so its north pole is pointing toward the sun. This means that the north pole is always in darkness, while the south pole is in continuous daylight. As a result, the north pole is much colder than the south pole. The temperature difference between the two poles creates strong winds that circle the planet. These winds can reach speeds of up to 2,000 kilometers per hour. When you look at Neptune through a powerful telescope, you will notice that it doesn't appear to be the same vivid blue as it does in images from the Hubble Space Telescope. This is because the methane gas in Neptune's atmosphere strongly absorbs red and infrared light, making the planet appear much darker than it does in Webb's image. On August 25, 1989, NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft made its closest approach to Neptune, coming within 3,800 miles, 6,100 kilometers of the planet's cloud tops. At the time, Neptune was the outermost planet in the solar system, and Voyager 2 was the only spacecraft to have ever visited it. During its flyby, Voyager 2 discovered that Neptune's atmosphere is much more active than previously thought. Wind speeds on the planet can reach up to 680 miles per hour, 1,100 kilometers per hour, making them some of the fastest winds in the solar system. Now, what is most remarkable about Webb's new image is the clear view of the planet's dynamic rings. Some of these rings haven't been seen at all, let alone with this clarity since Voyager 2 passed by all those years ago. Now, you are probably wondering what these rings are. Planet rings are a type of planetary ring system that consists of a set of rings that orbit a planet. Most planet rings are composed of debris, dust, and ice particles that are thought to be left over from the formation of the planet. Rings can also be found around moons and other small bodies in the solar system. While planet rings are not as common as ring systems around moons, they are still quite fascinating. Now, Neptune's rings are usually not the first thing that comes to mind when we think of the planet. They are challenging to see in visible light because they are dark and of varying sizes and densities. However, this image allows us to see them in all their splendor. The rings are composed of dust and rocks and may have formed relatively recently when one of Neptune's moons was shattered. They are an incredible sight, and this image affords us the opportunity to see them in an entirely new way. However, Webb was able to photograph seven of Neptune's known 14 moons, even though several of them are not as visible as they used to be. Galatia, Naiad, Thalassa, Despina, Proteus, Larissa, and another moon that might not be as prominent are among them. A bright spiky star can be seen in the sky above Neptune, but it is actually Triton, the largest and most peculiar moon of Neptune. Triton is the largest moon of Neptune, 
discovered in 1846 by William Lassell. It is the only large moon in the solar system with a retrograde orbit, meaning that it orbits in the opposite direction to Neptune's rotation. This is thought to be the result of a giant impact in the distant past. Triton is a cold and desolate world, with a surface temperature of negative 391 degrees Celsius. It is covered in nitrogen frost and tholins, which are dark organic compounds. The only close-up images of Triton were taken by the Voyager 2 spacecraft as it swings past 1989. These images revealed a geologically young surface, active geysers spewing icy material out from its frozen crust, and a vast south polar cap with a pinkish hue. For starters, Triton is the only large moon in the solar system that orbits in the reverse direction of its planet's rotation. Additionally, Triton's orbit is slowly decaying, meaning it will one day crash into Neptune. The enormous moons of the solar system, including Earth's moon and the larger moons of Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, all orbit on a plane that is almost level with their planets and revolve counterclockwise when viewed from above. Triton, however, does not follow any of these patterns. Instead, the strange planet orbits Neptune in the direction opposite of its rotation and travels along a path that is sharply inclined, 157 degrees compared to Neptune's equator. A retrograde orbit, which is atypical for a large moon of the solar system, demonstrates that Triton had a very different history from other major moons in the system. Triton shares many characteristics with minor planets like Pluto, leading researchers to theorize that it may have originated from the Kuiper Belt instead of our solar system. Webb's image of Triton reveals an unexpectedly bright surface, which is likely due to a frozen sheen of condensed nitrogen. This nitrogen reflects 70% of the sunlight that hits it, making Triton one of the brightest objects in Webb's image. The planet Neptune appears dark in comparison because the methane in its atmosphere absorbs near-infrared light. The image captured by the James Webb Space Telescope shows a smattering of hundreds of galaxies, many of which have never likely been observed before. The one that stands out the most, however, is a barred spiral galaxy towards the bottom left of the image. Scientists have declared that this galaxy, which has not been explored in depth until now, may be about a billion light years away. It is primarily populated by young stars that have a blue tint in these types of wavelengths. This image, taken by the Webb Telescope, is the sharpest ever image of Neptune's largest moon, Triton. It is also the first image of Triton that shows the moon's southern hemisphere, which is normally hidden from Earth. This image is just the beginning for Webb. The telescope will continue to observe Neptune and Triton in the coming years, and we are sure to learn more about these distant worlds. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please consider tapping the like button and subscribing to my channel. Your support is very much appreciated, and it helps me to continue making videos like this one. I'll see you all next time.